to magnify the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Anybody glad to be here today? Amen. Amen. And listen, listen, we get ready. Elder Green is going to come momentarily to pray. I want to say this. I, I want everybody to hear me. I want you actually praying. I, I notice sometimes when we are uh, when we all have Zoom prayer, sometimes on Zoom prayer, one other people praying because the other mics are muted. Well, we're on Zoom prayer. If you're part of Zoom prayer, you ought to be praying. There are some who are on Zoom Facebook this morning. Yeah, yeah. You should be praying with us. When we're in the sanctuary, you should be praying. How many of you all know that we're living in a crucial time? Crucial. It, it, is, it is more crucial than you know. My father and I, we've made a practice in the family prayer. We have family prayer every night. We've been, we have been praying that the Lord does not allow a World War III to break out now. Yes, yes. Do you see the, the, the Chinese keep yes. sending these balloons? Yes. And, and, and uh, they're upset because we're shooting them down, which we have the right to do because they're in our territory. That's correct. Right. And you may think that they can't start a war, but in history, there is a particular war in the 1700s known as the War of Jenkins' Ear. A man got his ear cut off, which they shouldn't have done. Amen. And about six or seven years later, because his ear got cut off, it led to a serious war between Britain and Spain. Well, I go even further. In the Bible, heaven said in the Bible. You find that some of the Jews went and visited uh, the little place, the little country of Ammon. And when they got there, they cut the, the, the men's beard off, half of their beard, and cut the portion of their clothing where their buttocks would have been shown. And because they did it, it led a war between Israel and Ammon. Some foolish things, seemingly, can lead to a war. And I'm saying to you that the saints, we better be, be praying in this crucial hour. Amen. Because war could be upon us. But how do you know that God is of God that we hear the prayers of the righteous? It's time for us to cry. Come on, clap your hands again, everybody. Come on, come on, clap your hands. The praise team is coming to lead us in a praise and worship song. And then we'll have the prayer this morning. Receive it by saying amen. amen. Come on, say amen again. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Y'all know the question I ask you every Sunday morning. Has God been good to you? Yes. yes. And I ask you that question every Sunday morning for a purpose. Because sometimes we just need to stop and we need to take time and we need to think back on how good God has been to us. So I don't have a lot to say this morning, but I will say God has been good to me. If you're a witness, I'm going to ask you to, step, to, to uh, raise your hand. And I'm going to ask you to stand on your feet because the song says, thank you for another chance to say yes. yes. You have another chance to say yes this morning. Come on, young people, stand to your feet.
hallelujah. Some of, just a yes, Lord. Come on, just swing it out. Yes, Lord. Come on, come on, help me on this morning. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, on this side of the room. Yes, Lord, on this side of the room. Come on, yes, that's it. That's it. Come on. Let's take a moment to praise him. That's it. Take a moment. God is in the room this morning. Hey. God, so take it. Hallelujah. We come with a yes in our spirit today. We come, oh God, praising you and just looking for a blessing. Lord, we need you today. We need you in this time, Lord. There's no other help we know. Father, we're calling on your name. Lord, we have a yes in our spirit, a yes in our souls on today. Stop by here today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, somebody needs you today, Lord. Pour out your spirit on us today. In the mighty name of Jesus, come in the room today, Lord. Lord, let your loving flow, Lord. Let your blessing flow on their people today, Lord. Oh, God, we need you today, Lord. We're trusting in you. We're leaning on the everlasting arm. Come in the room today, Lord. Move like never before. Somebody, somebody today, Lord, just need a blessing. Somebody needs healing today. Somebody needs deliverance today. Say it today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Touch us right now, Lord. Touch us today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let it rain down today, Lord. Somebody, somebody today, Lord, it's calling on you. Depending on you, Lord. Backs up against the wall, but Lord, we're calling on your heavenly name. Move in this place today, Lord. Bless and touch right now. In the name of Jesus. No other help we know, Lord. Oh, God, as you come in the room today, Lord, we, we just need you today, Lord. We just need you to move today, Lord. Somebody, somebody today, Lord, is just counting on you. Oh, God, look on us today, Lord. Bless us name by name and face by face. Look on our neighbors today, Lord. Bless them in a special way. Every visitor in the room today, Lord. All of those under the sound of my voice. Rain it down on us today, Lord. Move in this place, in this building, in this edifice today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And oh God, as we call on you today, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your grace today. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your move that's in this room today, Lord. Oh, God, we know that there's none like you nowhere. Bless today, Lord. Somebody today, Lord, is on the beds of affliction. We need you to walk in today, Lord. Those that are in the cot's hospital room, convalescent center today, Lord. Those, oh, God, that just on their way today, Lord. Bless today, Lord. And those, oh, God, that will listen by means of Facebook and whatever other means they're listening about today, Lord. Just let them today, Lord. Receive your spirit. Let him fill you today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And oh God, we ask, oh God, that you look on this church today, Lord. Look on our leader today, Lord. Bless him in a special way. Give him strength from on high. In the name of Jesus. Look on the first lady today, Lord. Bless her today, Lord. Touch her body. And build her up where she's going to hell. In the name of Jesus. And God, look on every missionary here today. Every mother today, Lord. Look on Mother Holly today, Lord. Who may be listening by way of radio today. Bless her in a special way. In the name of Jesus. And oh God, look on the usher today, Lord. Every choir member today, Lord. Oh, God, they walk us on this morning. We're calling on you today, Lord, because you only our only help today, Lord. Bless in a special way, Lord. And oh, God, those that are, oh, God, in the war-torn countries today, Lord, those that are fighting against the enemies today, Lord, those that are in Ukraine today, Lord. Oh, God, those that are affected by the, oh, God, affected by the earthquake today, Lord. Look on them today, Lord. Oh, God, we know you're a miracle worker, Lord. Continue to work miracles today, Lord. Oh, God, they need you today. They're calling on you today, Lord. Look on those families today, Lord. Those mothers, those fathers, and the children today, Lord. Bless them in a special way, Lord. And oh God, we know you haven't given up on them today, Lord. I just heard a report that, Lord, that they even found people on last night. After five or six days, they're still finding people today, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody tell them, thank you. Thank you, Lord. So oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And oh God, we just want you to bless in this place, Lord. Name by name. Face by face, know that you're not a respecter person. We ask that you look on it today, Lord, and strengthen us and send your word today, Lord. Let no flesh glory, but you get all the glory, all the honor and praise. 
we ask in Jesus' name. Let us all say thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Amen.
something so that he couldn't explain it, that that boy got him started running. Yeah. But listen, he didn't understand it, but at the name of Jesus, yes. something happened. Yes. Hallelujah. Some of us have come here with some problems, some situations in our lives, some things we're trying to deal with. Even you younger people who are out here right now, I want you to try this experiment. I want everybody in here. I want you to call on the name of Jesus. Right? Now. Come on and shout his name, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I don't believe you can call that name too many times and not feel something. Hallelujah. I want everybody again. Come on and call his name out real life. Jesus. Come on, keep calling his name for a moment. Jesus. Come on, call it, call it, everybody.
The choir is going to come with its final selection. Victory belongs to Jesus. How many of you know victory belongs to him? Yeah. Makes no difference what you're going through right now. Yellow Green prayed about somebody who feels like your back is against the wall. You need to know today that victory belongs to Jesus. If you belong to Jesus, it belongs to you.
worship time, this worship experience in person. We're here. We're here. Amen. And the Lord has so wonderfully blessed us. Amen. Say amen again if you will. Uh, I'm thankful that the Lord has blessed uh, my wife, myself to have recovered. We had a rough time on last Sunday. It started with her first. Amen. And whatever it was, of course, the doctors told us. Yes, sir. And then I had my bout with it. I was here in church. And, uh, uh -huh. I wasn't just feeling my best, but I was feeling okay when I came to church. Yes. But as church began to go further, I felt a little weaker. Yes. Started feeling a little bad. Uh -huh. And uh, the devil told me, he said, you get up there and preach. Say, you, you, you're going to fall out. That's what the devil said. That's what he told me. Now, I've been sick before, come to the pulpit and preach. Yes. But when he told me that, I think that kind of made me more determined than ever to preach. Because the devil is alive. Y'all say amen. amen. And uh, I felt that that particular message was the message for that day. And I did pretty good preaching. Amen. Prayed for the people. But when I got through, amen, I just felt all of a sudden all my strength was gone. Thank God for the saints. Because yes. you all prayed for me. Yes. Amen. Prayed for me. And um, of course, we did go to the doctor. Yes. And um, they examined us also. They had some couple of rough days. Yes. But I know, I know that you all continue to, you continue to pray for me at first lady. And I'm grateful for your prayers. Amen. And then if you call, you text, and some yes. came to by the house to bring things that would help us out and I appreciate listening that you can't find a greater people than the people of God. Amen. The saints are the best in the world. Y'all ought to say amen. Yeah. That's right. You do. The saints are the best and I thank God for you. Let's go to the word of the Lord that's found in the gospel according to St. John chapter 6. St. John chapter 6. And we're going to begin reading with verse 15. St. John chapter 6. 
and verse 15. I see some of your heads have been bent over with phones. If you look at the scripture up, that's fine. If not, put it away. <laughs> Stand with me as we read the word of the Lord. St. John 6 and 15. St. John 6 and 15, I believe is on the screen for us. The word of the Lord reads, When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. And when evening was now come, his disciples went down into the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea towards Capernaum. And it was now dark. Look at that phrase. Uh -huh. And it was now dark. Yes. And Jesus was not come to them. Uh -huh. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. Uh -huh. So when they had rowed uh, about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship. And they were afraid. But he said unto them, It is I. Be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at hand, was at the land, whether they went. Let me pray for a moment. I have the Father, we thank you again for all things. Thank you. As I stand now before such a great people again, give us words from heaven, words of life, words of encouragement. Wow. And even to say, we thank you, thank you for what you're about to do in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I want to use from that uh, text today the subject, we are going to make it. Amen. Did y'all hear the text of the subject, brother? We are going to make it. I would... Uh, most of you got a mask on anyway, and I don't think y'all are as afraid. Now, can you turn to a neighbor if you feel okay about it? And just help them out by saying, we're going to make it. Come on, tell them again, we're going to make it. In our text today, Jesus had just performed a notable miracle. We didn't read about this, the scriptures before verse 15. You're familiar with it because he fed the multitude of 5,000 men. Now, in Matthew 5 and 21, they tell us 5,000 men besides women and children. So, Jesus really fed probably close to 20,000 people. Because the scripture, they only counted the men. He fed the multitude of 5,000 men with five barley loaves and two fish. Verse 14 tells us that when they had seen the, the miracle, that is, that multitude mm -hmm. of those hungry people, destitute people. Mm -hmm. And when they saw that miracle, they declared that this is the prophet who is come, is to come into the world. They actually recognized Jesus mm -hmm. as the Messiah. But listen to this. They recognized him as the Messiah for all the wrong reasons. You see, they desired to use Jesus for their own purposes. They desired to use him for their own purposes instead of realizing the true purpose for which he came. He came to save them from their sin. Say amen, everybody. And I wonder today about the church world and about people in general. Amen. Why do we seek Jesus? Oh, yeah. Do we seek him, as the folks would say, for the fishes and loaves? Mm. Right. Or do we seek him for our spiritual needs? Right. Amen. Do we seek him to have a relationship with yeah. God? Do yeah. we yeah. seek him for those of us who are saved now for spiritual renewal? Come on, say amen. Everybody say amen. amen. We don't want to do the same thing that the people did then. Right. Listen, folks. We cannot use Jesus, amen, in a quick, rich, in a quick, rich scheme. All right. All right. You know, thinking that I can just use the Lord 
like a genie in a magical magical lab. I get three wishes. And he's just gonna give me whatever I want. Some of us right now, we want to go in prayer and we want to ask the Lord to give us five hundred thousand dollars. And 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 you've been told that whatever you pray for, that God will grant it. But there's some misconceptions. Will y'all hear me here? I say there's some misconceptions because when we pray, we ought to pray according to his will. Why don't everybody say amen? amen. Or better yet, lift your hands and say, Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Come on again, say, Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. This multitude that had been fed by Jesus, now they want to take him by force and make him a king. So what does Jesus do? And let me back up. They wanted to make him a king because if you study New Testament biblical history, you find out that the Jews were now under the command of the Roman authority. They were paying high taxes. They did not like those individuals, the tax collectors. They did not care for the Roman authorities like Pontius Pilate and others who had come there to rule over them. And so they wanted somebody, somebody to come along to be their king, mm -hmm. to be a king for the people, and that they may enjoy their own freedom. And so after they wanted to make Jesus or take him by force and make him a king, the question is just that, what does Jesus do? Well, Mark chapter 6, because if you want the full story, you need to read not only St. John, but you need to also read Mark chapter 6 and and I think it's about Matthew chapter 6 as well. That's not quite it. It's, it's close by in the book of Matthew. Mark 6 and 45 said, And straightway, he being Jesus, constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida yes. while he sent away the people. Yes. Notice the scripture says straightway. So immediately... He constrained his disciples. He compelled or he ordered the disciples to get into the boat. Because as one author said, he knew they were in danger. Now you may say, what danger would they be in? They were his closest men and they wanted to make, make Jesus King, how could they be in danger? It was not danger of their physical lives, but it actually was danger of their relationship with God. Danger, really, spiritually. The people wanted to make Jesus a king, and the disciples probably were getting ready to rejoice. Mm -hmm. Rejoice at the opportunity at becoming powerful, becoming famous, becoming rich because if he's king and we are his his closest followers surely we're going to get a part of this uh, one writer said that Judas uh, no doubt thought he'd become the treasurer amen and Peter uh, maybe thought that he'd become the prime minister and maybe John would have would have thought surely I'd be sitting on his left hand somebody say amen but what does Jesus do? He broke up the meeting immediately, sent the disciples away. And notice in the Bible, when we get to verse 17, we read it today, that the disciples got into the ship. It's in the evening. And verse 17 said, and now it was dark. Come on, repeat that out for this time. And now it was dark. Oh, it was dark. Oh, yes, it was. And Jesus had not come to them. That's what the Bible said. It was God. He put him in the ship, but ordered them to get in the ship. The ship is now gone into the water. Jesus was still on, on the shore. Jesus was in the mountains. He was there praying. It was dark. And Jesus has not come to them. Perhaps this verse and those that follow speak to you. Even the condition that you must face as you journey on this life 
on your way home. You do know that we are pilgrims who are just traveling through this land. And on our journey, there are some tough days. Can anybody testify to that? There are some rough spots. There are some difficulties that we must face. And I feel like that even some of us right now in this journey, in these tough times, it is now dark. Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It is dark because of what we're facing. Because as saints, we are not of this world. Y'all heard that before. We are not of this world, but yet we are in this world. See, we're not of this world because we don't participate in this world's system. But yet we're living in this world. A world that is made up of the wicked who are like the troubled sea. Isaiah 57 and 20 says the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest. Whose waters cast up mire and dirt. We're in this world. Not of this world, but we're in this world and uh, it's dark and we're in a sea that is trouble. You are surrounded by trouble. Somebody say amen. amen. And because trouble is all around you, it affects you. Right. It affects your emotions from time. Come on, y'all. Your amen. mental, even can, can affect our mental stability amen. because there's something about distress and worry. That works on the mind. Then it works on our physical body. Our heart. Come on you all. And I, I've been praying even more. Lord, Lord help us. Give us relief from stress. That's what the spirit of God keeps telling me to pray. Give re relief from stress. Somebody is stressed out. Seems like you don't know what to do. You don't know where to turn. You don't know what's going to happen on tomorrow. And I come with the message today that we're going to make it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, somebody say, we're going to make it. Come on, say it again, we're going to make it. Amen. Oh, yes, we're living in, in a troubled world, a world that rejects Jesus. It is a world which lieth in the wickedness, according to 1 John 5 and 19. The world follows Satan, who's their God. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 tells us that Satan is the God of this world who have blinded the minds of them which believe not. So yes, you are going to be troubled at times because the folks around you are troubled because they are following a person who has blinded their mind. They don't believe in this glorious gospel that we have accepted. Somebody say amen. We are living in a world that is devoid or without spiritual light. A world, amen, which, had, which really hangs on the shadow of death. In this text again, it was now dark. And Jesus was not come to them. Hallelujah. Oh, the, when I think about darkness, think about a, a time where there's trouble. I can't see my way out. I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Job in his trials, he was in that predicament. Job 30 and verse 26 part B. Job said, when I waited for light, there came darkness. One theologian asked the question, could it be a time that, that Christ himself withholds the light of his countenance, even from his own? Can, can it not be that uh, he decides to withhold your blessings, your deliverance for a moment of time? Why don't you say amen? amen. Because Job in his misery said in Job 23 and 3, Oh, that I knew where I might find him. That I might come even to his seat. I, I don't know where he is. I just want to find him. That I might come to his seat. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, and, and that's what some of you all are. If I only knew how to find the 
depending on. If I can just find him, I'll go to his throne. Yeah. And what that's really, and that's a saying here, is that some of us have been praying for something for a long time. Do I have any prayer warriors here? Yeah. I say, do I have any prayer warriors here? Some of us have been praying for something for a long time, and it still has not happened. Look like our prayers have not been answered. Why don't you say amen? amen. Look like nothing is coming together. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. We, we, we felt that song a few minutes ago about victory belongs to Jesus. Yeah. Victory belongs to me. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, and that song sounded good, but even after the song has finished, the devil is still whispering in somebody's ears. Still remind you of the trouble that you were in. Still remind you of how you feel and, and what's going on in your house. What is taking place on your job. What's taking place in this world. He reminds you of that because he wants you to feel down and out. Thank you, Jesus. And you know you've been praying. You know you've been seeking God. You, you know you've been living right. But even uh, there are times when you, you, you can't even feel or it seems like you can't even feel this presence. Yes. The presence of the Lord is in this building right now. Oh, yes. And every one of us need to feel this presence. Yes. Say amen somebody. Yes. But yet there's a time seem like I'm so far away from the Lord. Not because I've sinned. But look like I'm so far away because of trouble that is all around me. Yes. Thank you Jesus. Because of the trouble. There are times you don't feel good about anything. You don't feel good about yourself. You may even have a moment where you don't feel like you even saved. And I'm so glad that salvation is not based on how I feel. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody help me tell him thank you. And in these days, you, in your time of prayer, you may have wondered why I had to God answer my prayer why hasn't God come to my rescue why hasn't God healed my body thank you Jesus Satan amen will look around and he will tell you you ought to just give up on God just give up thank you Jesus them folks been talking about how much of a deliverer he is and how much victory you can get and look at where you are. He hasn't done anything for you. Amen to you. And uh, he'll make you feel like if you're not careful to get to the point, you'll begin to wonder, does God even exist? Somebody say amen. amen. The disciples were on that ship. It was now dark. And Jesus had not come. And the longer they waited, the worse things became. Yeah. Verse 18 tells us, and the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. It was dark, and now a storm has come. Yeah. And the thing about it, when you study, they were on the Sea of Galilee that was also known as, as Lake Genesaret. Uh, there were mountains that were around in the area. Mountains, I believe, on each side. And, and in my study, it, it says that, uh, that all of a sudden, a wind could come over the mountain. I believe it's a warm air. The air that would be uh, at the surface of the sea. Most times, it was somewhat cool. And the contrast would cause a violent storm on that sea because that sea was basically within a mountain area and it could come all of a sudden and these storms were very dangerous oh it was dark and now the storm has come the storm is raging the storm is getting rest worse rather and the disciples may have been thinking Jesus must have forgotten about us he constrained us. Up. He ordered us to get on this ship. Where is Jesus? You may be in the point of your life. You know that Jesus has told you to do certain things. Has given you the green light. 
to do certain things. Amen. Has even put in your spirit to go here or to do that. And look like now everything is falling apart. I know the Lord told me to do what I'm doing. But I don't see that victory. Y'all been singing about it. I don't see that healing. I don't see that deliverance. Yeah, yeah. That you've been talking about. Say amen somebody. Amen. And I don't care who you are. Yes. It doesn't matter. I'm the pastor in this church. And I know the Lord called me to preach. Amen. I know the Lord sent me here. To be the pastor. And live in the valley. But sometimes I get a little discouraged. Right. Uh, uh, sometimes. I thought about uh, just maybe surrendering and giving the church back to, to the bishop and maybe I could move to Atlanta. There have been thoughts at times I was been time I was so disgusted I said I don't want people to call me Pastor Riley, Elder Riley, Deacon Riley. I just want to go somewhere and be a worker under the pastor and help him as much as I can. Hallelujah. I don't care who you are. You're going to have those moments. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. But I come to tell you right now. That in your darkest time. Amen. You can make it. I say you can make it. If you believe that lift your hand and tell God thank you. Come on somebody tell God thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's forgotten about us. Oh, if the master had only been here, this storm would not have come up. Thank you, Jesus. If he had been with us, even asleep on the pillow, his presence could have had cheered us on. But Jesus was not there. And the reason I said that, I'm sure they remember because they had been in storms before. And, uh, matter of fact, we read from St. John chapter 6, but I believe it was St. John chapter 4, uh, that they went a storm in. Amen. But in that storm, Jesus was on the ship. And even though he was asleep below deck, they yet felt better because he was there. And they, 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 they know that he was there. Somebody said, wake him up. Wake him up. Wake him up. They, they awakened. Jesus said, do you care that we perish? And what did Jesus do? He got up and rebuked the sea, told the sea to calm down because Jesus said, peace be still. Yeah. But this time, where is Jesus? Yeah. Where is he? Somebody say amen. amen. Many, many times when we pray, when we pray, amen, we like to figure out in advance how is the Lord going to fix the situation. Yeah. Many times we're plotting our mind. He's going to do this. He's going to come through the front door. But you've got to remember that his ways are not your ways. you got to remember the Lord has his own way of doing things. I may have expected him to come through the front door, but he might want to come through the back door. Why don't you say amen? amen. He might want to come through the roof. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He knows how to even surprise us. And, uh, he, he knows how to make a way out of nowhere. He knows what to do that I can't even dream of or even imagine. Uh, God knows even how to make your enemies be your footstool. Amen. Why don't you say amen? amen? Come on and say amen. I was listening to this white minister the other day uh, I believe it might have been on Facebook I don't know where it was but he was speaking of this this mother who was a black woman and uh, she was praying she was praying and she was telling the Lord everything she needed and wanted and uh, she went to the front door heard the doorbell the knock on the door and everything she wanted and everything she needed was at the front door but the, but just a little, some so many feet away, there was her neighbor hiding in the bushes. And he came forward laughing. 
And he told, told a woman, because this man was an atheist. He said, I heard you praying. And in other words, I want to prove that there is no God. I heard you praying. And all the stuff you see, I brought it here. God had nothing to do with this. Thank you, Jesus. And the mother said, well, thank you, son. Thank you, because God know how to make the devil pay for everything I need. I want you to know God will make a way. Come on and say amen. So we may be looking for something from God and expecting them to do it in a certain way. And God already has mapped the way out for you. Why don't you say amen? Come on and say amen. I know the Lord has his own way of doing things. Now the green just preached not long ago about Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Yes, hey man, uh, Lazarus, their brother had died. Lazarus was sick and died. When Jesus arrived in Bethany, Martha told Jesus, if you had been here, my brother, Lazarus would not have died. And a few minutes more, Mary came out and said the same thing. But, but sometime earlier, uh, when Jesus got the word that Lazarus was dead. Yes, and I, I believe they had to send a messenger mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to Jesus about two days away. Yeah, yeah. It would take two days to get there. Right. And it would take two days to get back to Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. That's why some preachers that preached in their message about the serve said that Jesus was four days late. Right. Why don't you say amen? Come on and say amen. But when Jesus got the word that Lazarus, amen, was dead, he told the disciples, I'm glad for your sake. I, was, I wasn't there. The question may be, how can Jesus be glad that he was not there to save his friend Lazarus from dying? Why don't you say amen? But I want to tell you again, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. The Lord wanted to show Mary and Martha and the crowd that was there at the graveside that God can do anything. That I'm a God of impossibility. I'm a God who can make a way out of nowhere. I'm a God who is a miracle working God. And although Lazarus had been dead for four days and now was stinking, Jesus yet came and raised him from the dead. Why don't you tell God thank you? Come on and tell God thank you. That's why the songwriter said, Mary, don't you weep. And Martha, don't you moan. Don't you know that God drowned Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea. Because when the children of Israel were, in, were at the Red Sea, mountains on each side, Pharaoh and his army was behind him. Somebody got afraid. Somebody was troubled. Did not God tell Moses to bring us out of Egypt? Why has he brought us to the Red Sea? Doesn't God know we could have taken another route? As a matter of fact, the Bible said that there was another route. As a matter of fact, the King James Version said, although that was near, it was the quickest way to the promised land. The route would have taken them northeast. But the Lord told Moses to go south and then turn east. And when they turned east, they were at the Red Sea. Come on and tell God thank you. And somebody right now, 
God brought you from the bondage of Pharaoh. You shouted about being saved. Everything was better. He said, I looked at my hands, and my hands looked new. I looked at my feet, and they did too. The sun is shining brighter. The moon looks better. You were glad the Lord saved you, but you got to a point in the life, and somebody's there now. You're at the Red Sea, and you don't know what to do. Pharaoh! Feel the bad thing behind you, wanted to take your life. But look at what the Lord did. He told Moses, stand still, for the salvation of God is near. Lift your arm of Moses. Lift your arm of Moses. Just got the staff. And when Moses lifted his arm, the Red Sea it divided for them to cross over. Somebody, somebody, you're at the Red Sea. Don't give up. Don't give in. You ought to lift your hand, Moses. All of your Moses now. You ought to lift your hand, Moses, and say, Lord, help me. I know you brought me out. You brought me out of my misery. I know you brought me out. You brought me out of bad days. You brought me from a hard taskmaster. You delivered me from my sins. And if you can bring me out of Egypt, you can bring me through the Red Sea. Shout yeah. Shout it yeah. in. I declare we're going to make it. I say we're going to make it. Lift your hand and tell God thank you. Come on and tell it thank you. Come on and tell it thank you. I got to close y'all. But look at the disciples. It was now dark. And now it was gloomy, even more gloomy. And somebody's life, you're experiencing dark times. And somebody's life, it has become more gloomy. You may have been sick, and when you go back to the doctor, he gives you more bad news. I know it's dark and gloomy. Because as you work with your children, the children are misbehaving more. Yes, it's dark and it's more gloomy, but your finances are getting worse. It's dark on your job, and you don't even know if I have a job on tomorrow. It's dark at home. Your home is deteriorating. Family falling apart. Marriage falling apart. But you've got to be determined. Even if you can't see it. You've got to be determined. Even if you can't feel it. I'm going to make it. I can't let the devil stop me now. I can't let the devil have control of my mind. I, I can't let the devil I, have control of my emotion. I, 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 I'm going to make it. I, I'm going to win. I, with Jesus I, on my side. I, yes! I, help me shout you in. I, I remember, I, and some of y'all ought to remember, I, the song that Myrna Summers wrote. I, that in the 90s, in the song, she said, I know, somehow, I know, somehow, 
way. We're gonna make it. Yes, we are. No matter what the test is, whatever comes our way, we are gonna make it. And then the song goes on. Say with Jesus, somebody lift your hand and say with Jesus on our side. Things will work out fine. We're gonna make it. I said we're gonna make it. Do you believe it? I said do you believe it? Lift your hand and declare. We're gonna make it. I can't see it. I can't feel it. I don't know how God is gonna do it. But somehow, some way, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. So I. I'm going to keep my hand in the hand of God. I'm going to keep rejoicing in my darkest hour. I'm yet going to praise Him. I'm yet going to give Him glory. Because God is on my side. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus is a peacemaker. Jesus is the way maker. Jesus is a friend over trouble world. Jesus will speak to my storm. Peace, be still. Peace on my job. Peace in my home. Peace with my family. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, somebody praise him now. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Hallelujah. Yeah, but shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. You know what I like? I like the fact. Ha, that even though it was dark, ha, even though it was gloomy, ha, the disciples ha, who were afraid, ha, they never kept, they never stopped, ha, never stopped trying to get back to Satan. Ha, but the Bible said ha, that they tore ha, in rowing. Ha, they must have been on a rowboat. Ha, they kept using the oil. Ha, Trying ha, to get back to Satan. Ha, I hear the Lord say, ha, Don't give in. Ha, don't give up. Ha, you might not see me. Ha, you might not know where I am. Ha, you might not be able to feel my presence. Ha, but don't give up. Ha, because I want y'all to know ha, that while they were rowing, ha, one of the other gospels, ha, it might be. Matthew, ha, that say when Jesus ha, was in that mountain, ha, that he saw them. Ha, I say he saw them. Ha, it's good to know ha, that in my trials ha, and in my tribulation, ha, that Jesus, ha, he see me. Ha, yes, he see you. Ha, he saw you. Ha, last month, ha, crying ha, on your bed, ha, he saw you ha, last week ha, at the job, ha, about to lose it, ha, he saw you ha, last night ha, with tears ha, streaming down your face, ha, but God brought you here today ha, to let you no, ha, he's an all-powerful God. Ha, he knows ha, how to fix your situation. Ha, he knows ha, how to bring you out. Ha, he knows ha, how to heal your body. Ha, he knows ha, how to heal your mind. Ha, he knows ha, how to bring your child home. Ha, he knows ha, how to supply your need. Ha, just hold Oh, God will surely bring it out. I'm going to stay 
on the ship because I know he's coming. I know he's going to walk on the water. I know he's coming to rescue me. Yeah! Help me shout yes. Help me shout yes. They kept roaring. They were tired because the word tall, I believe, means tired. But they kept on roaring. And after a while, they looked and here Jesus was walking on the waters. They thought they'd seen a ghost. But Jesus said, be of good cheer in his eye. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, and in the account of St. John, I believe it is, that when he got on the ship, mm -hmm. all the time they'd been rowing and couldn't get back to the shore, immediately that ship was at the shore and the storm had come down. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody had to tell him thank you. Somebody had to tell him thank you. Ah, I declare to you today that the Lord sees you. He knows your situation. He understands your fears. Thank you, Jesus. He knows how you feel. He knows what you're going through. But the message that they said, we're going to make it. Come on and help me to clap. I said, we're going to make it. Thank you, Jesus. I said, we're going to make it. Hallelujah. We, we, we have gone through a pandemic. And things were quite crazy for a while. Hallelujah. But we're yet here. We're going to make it, y'all. Some loved ones, and it, it hurt our heart, did it? But we're gonna make it. I said, We're gonna make it. Some of us been sick and quite sick, but we're gonna make it. Anybody believe the word that we're gonna make it somehow, some way? Ah, uh, we're gonna make it. I don't know how I'm gonna pay my bills tomorrow, but we're gonna make it. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you tell God thank you? Come on and tell God thank you. Hallelujah. We're gonna make it. I'm getting ready to close, y'all. I'm getting ready to close. This is what the Lord has given me. And I, I, I told this story before, but I think it's worth it. Tell it again. The late dad Barry, who had a large family, very large family. It is said that. There was nothing to eat. No food in the cupboard. Not even in any crackers for he and all those children. But he gathered the family together. Gathered them together and prayed the blessing over the food that they were about to receive. With nothing in the house. And said so they got them, dad got them praying. He was a great man of God. But he got them praying. Somebody was at the back door knocking. Car full of groceries. Full of groceries. When even when you can't see your way out. Yeah. You just don't know how God is going to do it. You got to trust him. You got to believe that God is going to make a way for me. Why don't you stand with me, everybody? Hallelujah. And some of you are going through some difficult times and difficult days. Things are quite confusing. Things don't look well. I've been praying for you. I've been praying for miracles. And I talked about that the other Sunday. We prayed at the altar last Sunday concerning some things. Hallelujah. I know some of the people were blessed. And there are some that may not have gotten all that was needed yet. But 
But I've been talking to the Lord just about every day. Lord, grant the miracle. That's what I've been praying. God, work this thing out. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that God wants to work on your back. He wants to show you that he is an all-powerful God. That he can do anything. But there are some of you, the Lord has said this. I'm hearing what God is telling me now. There are some of you, the Lord is saying that I put you in that predicament so that you will begin to seek for me. That's what I hear him saying right now. I put you in that predicament for you to start seeking me. And if you will stop fighting, fighting against me, fighting to yield to me, I will open up some doors and show you some things that will be quite astounding and even almost unbelievable. Now I know that word was for somebody that wasn't for everybody, but that word was for somebody right now. Hallelujah. And you know who you are and you know that it is time that you surrender all to him. You ought, to, you ought to want some rest in your life. You ought to want some peace in your life. You ought to stop uh, fighting, struggling against your own prosperity, your own blessings. And if you would come, we're going to pray. That might not have been quite the sentiment of the message that I preached, but sometimes God will give another message. I know what I heard God say. We're going to pray. Because there's some of you. That message was not for you. Necessarily. But you're going through some things. I want to pray for you too. But you know you have been running from God. And you just have not yielded and surrendered to his will. To his way. I challenge you. You don't have to be ashamed because if you would come, if you would come and truly yield to the Spirit of the Lord, there's going to be a turnaround in your life. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking to somebody now. Come right now. Don't you lose your blessing. Come right now. You know you want to come. Make your way to this altar right now. And let the Lord do something for you. Let the Lord heal your heart. You've been suffering long enough. You've been troubled long enough. Thank you, Jesus. There are others who need to come. Come on to this altar. And let God do something wonderful in your life. Hallelujah. Help me say yes, everybody. Yes. 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 Now this time, I want you to sing it with me. Yes. Come on, everybody sing this with me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on now, come on now. I'm going to pray. 
I'm going to what God has given me to go. Lord, I thank you and I praise you and I magnify your name. Thank you for these individuals who have come, Lord, at the response of your word. Lord, you know where they are and some have come, Lord, because they have been fighting against you. They have not surrendered all to you. I pray, Lord, that you touch every heart, every mind, Lord, that have come for that reason. You know where they are, Lord. Some of them have been struggling. Some of them have wanted to do better, have tried to do better. But the problem is they tried on their own. They have not given to you. Lord, fix it now. Somebody hit me and pray. I said, Lord, fix it now. Somebody hit me to pray. I said, Lord, fix it now. We need your help, God. We need to move with your spirit here. Touch the heart, Lord. Touch the mind, Lord. You know what to do, God. You know how to do it, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Fix it, Lord. Fix it. Fix it for us today. Yes, Lord. Somebody tell him yes, Lord. Somebody tell him yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, come on. Open your mouth. Tell him yes, Lord. Tell him yes, Lord. Lord, I need your help. Come on, tell it, Lord, I need your help. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I need help, Lord. I need you, God. I can't do this by myself. So help me, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now listen, listen. I, I, I pray that for a particular reason. What we're gonna do now is you came to the altar because you know you've had problems. Surrender to the Lord. Hallelujah. If you, you know that's your situation, I want you to tell the Lord this now. Come on, close your eyes. These, these persons are praying this now. Come on, say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I know. I know. Everything. Everything. Is not right. Is not right. Between you and I. Between you and I. I come to the altar, Lord. I to because I need help. I come to the altar, Lord, because I want you to touch my mind. Help me, Lord. I want you to re really mean this. Help me, Lord. Help me to surrender all. Help me, Lord, to yield to your spirit. I need you, Lord, in my life. Yes, Lord. Now tell him yes, Lord. Tell him yes, Lord. Come on, tell him yes, Lord. Lord Jesus. I am, I am sorry. Come on, read it from the heart. I am sorry, I am sorry. for what I've done. I'm sorry, Lord, for the way I've treated you. I'm sorry, Lord, from running away from you. Touch me again. Touch my mind. Now, Lord, I want you to save me. Lift your hand with your eyes closed. Now, Lord, I want you to save me. I'm on the altar, Lord, to give up to you. I'm on the altar, Lord, to yield to you. I surrender. Come on, tell him, I surrender. I give up, Lord. That's it, I give up, Lord. I give up, Lord. I give up to you, God. Come into my heart. Come into my soul. Do a work in me, God. Work on me. Work on my heart. Work on me. Work on my mind. Help me, Lord. Help me. Tell him, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Jesus. That's it, that's it. That's it. That's it. Crowd trouble. That's it, that's it. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I need help, Lord. Come on, tell him, help me. I need your help. I need you, Lord. Touch me, Lord. Touch, Lord. Touch me, Lord. At the altar. I'm tired of doing the things I'm doing. I'm tired of being where I am. Lord, deliver me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, deliver me. Cry to Lord, deliver me. I need deliverance. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Do it for me. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 
and Lord. Faith when it's broken. Faith and Lord. You are a healer. You are a deliverer. I want you to touch your mind. Yes, Lord. The wound that is here. The pain she's seen. The things she's gone through. Help right now. God, you're able to fix what is broken. You're able, Lord. Find the devil. He is alive. The blood of Jesus against you now. The blood of Jesus is against you now. Touch her, Lord. Touch her, Lord. Make a brand new. Give her, Lord, the opportunity to experience the newness of life. Let there be a change on the inside. You're able to heal. You're able to deliver. And I believe your word. I trust you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not asking you to do, I'm not asking you to act like nobody else. Don't get in your own way. Tell it, thank you. That's it. Tell it, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Tell it, thank you. God, I'm looking to you. You are a deliverer. You are a healer. Somebody help me. Come on, lift your hands and say, Lord, you are a healer. You are a deliverer. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, I want you to fix it. Help us to know, Lord. Yes, God. That we can make it. We can make it in you. We can make it because you're on our side. The thing that she's requested. The thing that are going on, God. I want you to fix it now. Yes, Lord. Bring peace. All my heart. Peace. Peace, Lord. Peace. peace, Lord. peace. For that family, Lord. Yes, Lord. She's crying out for the family. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. She's crying out to you, God. God, work it out. Work it out, Lord. Work it out, Lord. I can tell it, tell it. Yes, Lord. Somebody tell it, yes, Lord. Somebody tell it, yes, Lord. Touch the touch the touch your heart. Look over, Lord. This child, Lord. That you're touching now. She may not understand everything. But God, I want you to bless her. God, I want you to touch her. God, I want you to work out things. Yes, Lord. 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 Yes, God, she's been crying out to you. Out of an earnest spirit. Help her now, God. Fix the situation. Fix the situation, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Tell it, yes, Lord. Tell it, yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for this daughter. My sister here, God. Lord, I lay hands on her. But more importantly, you lay your hands on her. Yes, yes, yes. You know what to do here, God. She hasn't told me anything, Lord. But you know, God. You know her situation. You know why she came to the altar. I preached a message today, Lord. That we're going to make it. Let her know, God. Let her rest, Lord. Let it rest in the spirit. That we're going to make it. Touch right now. Touch right now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Renew our mind here. Renew our spirit. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Give it that kind of a love. Nobody but you, God. Can bless. Nobody but you, God. Can touch. Have your way. Have your way. Give me just a few more minutes. Just a few more minutes. But I want you to sit in the crowd happily. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to sit in the crowd. I want you to be humble. Let it be so to see. Hallelujah.
Lift your hands. 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 Hand your way, Lord. a threat to the kingdom, to his kingdom, but find him, Lord, find the devil now, in the name of Jesus, touch her mind, touch her heart, Lord, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, I call on you, somebody, call on the name of Jesus, come on, I need y'all to just shout Jesus, oh Jesus, 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 Jesus,
I want you to help her now, God. Whatever's going on in her life, be the God that she needs now. The deliverer that is needed now. The savior that is needed now. God, touch us now, God. Oh, God, I pray for the miracle of life. I pray that you turn things around. Yes, Lord. For you are able. There is nothing that's too hard for you. We need a miracle here, God. We need your deliverance. Let it be so. Let us see the difference. Let us feel the difference. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God. We love you now. We love you. Hallelujah. We love you. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. Now stay with me. Understand Mother Law was standing. I didn't tell you folks to leave the altar so quick, y'all. Just leave it again. I don't need it, but God, look on Mother Law. Touch your body. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, for this senior member of the church being able to come to church. Thank you, God, for the desire to be here. Lord, she was on the altar. She may not have felt her best, felt like standing. But God, I lay hands on her now for you to touch her, for you to deliver, to make whole, God. Strengthen the Lord, strengthen the master, strengthen the will, God. And help right now in the name of Jesus. Everybody clap your hands here. Come on, everybody clap. I didn't want y'all to go too quick. I didn't want y'all to leave. The prayer of faith has been prayed. The prayer of faith has been prayed. We lay hands before you leave. And you that have left. And you that are sitting in your seat. I want you to lift your hand. I want you to give God his best prayer. We're going to make it. The word has come forth to speak in your faith. The prayer has been prayed. Now I want you to, everybody begin to rejoice and begin to thank him. Come on, open your mouth right now, right now, right now. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Come on, open your mouth.
Come on, I want y'all to help her to praise God. I want y'all to help her. Hallelujah. I mean, come on, y'all can make some noise out here. Come on, y'all not loud enough for me. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Come on, everybody, everybody. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Tell God, thank you. Tell God, thank you. Thank you. Tell him, thank you. Thank you. Y'all be glad for the Lord. Be glad for the Lord. Be glad for the Lord. everybody and praise the Lord. You can go to your seats now. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise God. We thank God for his goodness. We thank God for his tenderness. Listen, the Lord has blessed on his altar today. Yes. Y'all hear me? Yes. Yes. I'm going to say it again. The Lord has blessed on his altar today. Y'all yes. say amen. Yes. Hallelujah. I strive as a pastor uh, not to preach so long, not to hold you so long, but at the same time, I can't quench the spirit. Amen. I cannot deny what he needs to do. Yes, yes. And I know the Lord has directed me to pray on this altar a little bit more, a little bit more. We need this. Hallelujah. And I thank God for what he's done on today. I thank God. Let me call one name that I to do several Sundays ago. Thank God for Sister Bubba. Amen. 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 Some of you may not have known the, the thing that she's gone through here recently. Some, some challenges. But God's been good to her. And now she's able to come to church again. And that's a beautiful sight. When God blesses his people to be able to come back to church. We thank God for what he has done and what he is doing right now. All right, let's prepare for giving. If you have not already done so, many people have, uh, many people are giving electronically. Now, I'm going to tell you, uh, I want to go back to, I really want to go back to Marge with our offering. I think that looks so good in church. And although I don't know, maybe more than 50% of people are giving it electronically now. Even if you give it electronically, you can still mar. Because if I was going to give it tradition, I would have done it at the time. But I think it would be good. We're not going to do it today, but we're going to be looking at this in the near, very near future. We, we, we did this about three years ago because of COVID to try to cut down movement in the church. But we are doing much better, even with the COVID thing. Amen. Am I right about that? Yes, so we're doing much better. All right, those that are receiving the offering, the urgent to have the offering, both, if you give it traditionally, just hold your offering up, your envelope, or whatever you're giving, and they are going to come and receive it. The announcement's going to come in a moment. You, you can make your way up here. But I need you to listen to me. This is one of the reasons I want to go back to margin. Because in our offering time, are, all, are you all listening to me? In our offering time, we're supposed to Every one of us are to be tithers, so we leave it tithe. We ask each member to do an expense offering of ten dollars to take care of the expenses of the church because they are men. They are men. We recently experienced a problem with our heat units, and we got one of them. 
It got too hot. What y'all did that? Y'all turned the, the vent on or something? It got too hot? They turned the vent on because it got too hot today. <laughs> but that, that's a good sign that the heat is working. So those type of things happen. And you have to have repair. That's what your expense offering for. But also, we can give a public offering. Let's say we're not going to do the expense, or we've already given the expense. We can give the public offering as well. We believe in giving unto the Lord. Listen, if you know me as pastor, I don't do what I think in terms of begging. But it is my job to also teach. Because the word of the Lord talks about giving. And it talks about our blessings when we give. Say amen if you will. We're going to pray the blessings on our Don't forget. And I need the office staff to help remind me of nothing. Maybe one of y'all get up and talk sometime. But please do not forget the building fund. We was we were supposed to be doing this weekly with the dollar sheet. Uh, I hope that you're doing so. Sister Riley, I want some of y'all to kind of give me a report maybe the next week or so and let us know where we are and what we're doing because we want to do a very good job this year in our building fund. Don't forget your building. All right, the announcer is going to give the announcement. I need you to listen very carefully. I need you to hear these announcements. We're going to soon be going on. All right, good afternoon. Announcements. Our winter revival is back on. Next Sunday, February 19th, the revival will begin at 5 o'clock p.m. Also, this service would include our district fellowship. The revival will continue through Tuesday, February 21st, with services beginning at 7 o'clock p.m., on Monday and Tuesday, the Superintendent Willie Hodges will be the speaker. In preparation for the revival, we will have prayer on Wednesday through Friday mornings at 6.30 a.m. Our regular services are as follows. Uh, on Wednesday evening, we'll have prayer and Bible study at 5.30 p.m. Thank you. Say amen. 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 All right, that is your hear the announcements. What did she say we do on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday morning? Prayer. It will be Zoom. We've been doing the 6:30 prayer on Thursday, but I'm asking sites to meet me on Zoom. Come y'all talking, you gonna miss it. On Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 6:30 a.m. for the morning prayer, and that that give the people who are going to work, they get up, make preparation, go to work, to get part of the prayer. Next Sunday evening, have they said next Sunday evening? Our revival begins. It just so happened when I asked the evangelist to come on that Sunday that he agreed to meet. And I had forgotten about the district fellowship meeting. But it all worked out because the district fellowship meeting is going to be here at Lenin of the Valley. I got a whole lot of talking. The pastor tried to get some instructions. Y'all listen to me for a moment. Then y'all carry on y'all conversation. What did I just say about next Sunday? Revival and what else? District the district fellowship meeting. So the evangelist is going to be the speaker on next Sunday evening, but the, the superintendent and the district missionary with the pastors and members of District 3 are going to be with us on next Sunday for the fellowship meeting. So it would be one service. But two different things going on. And, and uh, what the superintendent's going to do, he's just going to make a couple of remarks. This missionary will make a couple of remarks. So we're looking to have a great time on Sunday night, revival and district fellowship meeting. All right? The one thing I forgot to give the announcement, this will be the last one. Next Sunday is Black History. The Black History Program will take place next Sunday. The children are making preparation. They've been coming and practicing and doing some things. So in the morning, worship time will be our Black History program. And we're going to have special guests that's going to come and do a presentation in that service as well. Let's be here to support our children. Let's have a great time. And let's remember what God has done for Black America. Because God has done some amazing things for us. Amen. Y'all come on, say amen. amen. They're going to have a short practice after church on today. And I really hope that 
uh, not only can we look at achievements for people in the past, but there's so many things that black people are doing right now that you all know about. The media never say anything about it. But God has given this race tremendous talent. And we want to praise God for what he's done. All right. We are standing together. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your patience. Thank God for all of you who are here today. Those in the visiting. God bless you. We are grateful for you on today. Let's stand together. God in heaven, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify your holy name. Thank you for the service on today. We thank you for the people who have come and that were blessed. And that were even saved on today. I pray, God, that you will bless every each and every one of us as we go to our home. Take us to our home safe and sound. And bring us back at the appointed time on this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget, Wednesday night, Wednesday evening, prayer and Bible study. I want to see you all on Wednesday evening. God bless you.